God bless you. Hope and pray that today you are doing well, uh, continue, continuing to trust in God in everything that you do. Uh, and we welcome you. We welcome you to our Wednesday devotion. Um, and, and again, I, I pray that today is, uh, today's devotion will be of a blessing to your life. You know, God has been, God has been so good. God has been so great to each and every one of us, you know, uh, and even in the middle of, of the difficulties and situation and circumstances that we face, God is still so faithful. The Lord is still so faithful, you know, uh, and, and God continues to do and what to do so much in our lives. You know, this past Sunday, uh, if, if you listen to Sunday sermon, we spoke on, um, Abraham and, and, and Sarah, Abraham and Sarah, how the situation that they went through, how um, Sarah kind of got impatient and, or, or not kind of, but she did, she, you know, she grew impatient in, on God's promises, what, what he had said of making uh, Abraham the father of nations. And she said, well, you know, God is not allowing me to have children. So maybe, you know, we go about it this way. And of course we know if you paid attention or not paid attention, but if you listen to and watch uh, uh, Sunday's devotion, uh, Sunday sermon. You, you heard the story, or you already knew the story of what happened with Hagar, and everything. Uh, you know, sometimes <clears throat> by our actions, we interfere with what God wants to do within our lives. You know, and when we do that, uh, we're basically saying, "I don't know if God can do what He said He's going to do, or what." You know, or, or or I don't know if God can answer the uh, the prayer, you know, petition that I have before Him. So what we're doing there is basically is that we're limiting God. We're limiting God in in by our actions, by our words, you know. And I'm going to read some verses. I'm going to read uh, Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9. And I'm reading out of, the, out of the New Living Translation, and I love the way it says it in, in this translation, this verse. It says, um, because this is the verse that says, for your ways are not my ways, your thoughts are not my thoughts. But I love the way it says it in the New Living Translation. It says, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. And in verse nine says, for just as the heaven, the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts you know and what are his ways what are his thoughts what are his ways and his thoughts you know in jeremiah 29 11 the bible says that that uh the plans that he has for us are for good and not for evil to give us a future and a hope you know and then we have in ephesians and i've read this verse several times uh it, th throughout you know sermons and devotions but it's a very powerful verse and it's ephesians 3 20 and again, out of the out of the, the the New Living Translation, it says, "Now all the glory to God, who is able, through His power, through His mighty power at work within us, uh, is able to accomplish infin infinitely more than what we can what we can ask or think." And there's ver versions that say translations that say what we can ask or imagine, you know, and that's what that's who God is. That's who God is. You know, He is able to do more. Than what we can ask or imagine you know and the plans and thoughts and ways that he has for us and his ways aren't like our ways what he wants isn't necessarily what we want but it's a good thing trust me it, it, because what god has and wants for us is so much better than what we want for ourselves i'll just plainly put it that way what god has and wants for us is so much better than what we want for ourselves so much better you know his plans are so much better his thoughts are so much better you know because when we think about everything that god has done in our lives uh and we think about it it's like would we have done it any differently would we have done it better would, would we have done it different of course we would have done it differently because of the fact that we don't think the way that God thinks so we would have done it a whole a whole totally different way and it probably would have been worse it probably would have been messed up and when it, and it probably would have messed up our ways 
because we're limited in our thinking, we're limited in our abilities, we're limited in even in what, oh, pastor, you don't know me. I can think per pretty big. I can imagine pretty big. Eh, trust me, that goes, it doesn't even compare to what God has for us. But that's why his word says that his thoughts are nothing like our thoughts. And, he, and his ways, it says, and my ways are far beyond anything you could even imagine. But that's what makes God, God. And, that, and that, that's what makes us, us. But we also, like I said in a, in a, in a sermon or a devotion that I did uh, not too long ago, which was we have to know who we are in him. And we have to know who he is for, you know, to us. Who are we in him? And his ways are far beyond ours, you know, and more than what he, we, we could even imagine. That just means that at his infinite power, everything that he wants to do and is going to do and needs to do, he wants to do it in us. He doesn't want to do it in anybody else. And what he's doing in, something, in somebody else isn't what he's going to do in us. But the problem is, is that many times we limit God. We limit God. We limit, as I, as I said in the beginning, we limit him by our actions. We limit him by our words. And when we do that, I'm going to put it this way. We, we put him in a box. We put God in a box and we say, no, you can only do within these parameters. You can only move within these parameters. You can only act. You can only bless me within these parameters. God's like, why? Don't do that to me. Let me do what I, what, what I want to do, what I need to do in your life. What I want and, and need to do within your family. Let me do what I want and need to do within your church. But no, we put, we put God in a box and, and we say, No, God, you can't move that way because, in my opinion, that's not the right way to do it. And God's like, well, I'm not asking you for your opinion. I need to do it the way I, I need to do it. And, and there's times that we say, no, 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 that can't be from God or, or he can't be from God because look at him. Look at him. Look at the way he talks. Look at the way he is. Look at the way he dresses. Look at the way, you know, and a lot of the times, you know, we look at people that walk into, into the doors of our churches and we're like, oh, no, 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 no. You know, we need to send him to another church. Why? God sent him here. Doesn't matter what he looks like, doesn't matter what she looks like, doesn't matter what they're how long or short or no hair is, you know, beard, no beard, you know, tattoos, no tattoos, piercing, no piercing, doesn't matter. God is bringing them to our church for a reason. Oh, no, no, Pastor, we don't, you know, we don't want people like that. Of course we, we, we want and we need people like that in our church because that's what the church exists. That's why the church exists. The church doesn't exist just to accommodate the people within these four walls. What if the people that were in the church when the Lord saved you thought the same way? Oh, no, no, no. We don't want some, somebody like that within our church. How would you have felt? Yeah, maybe you didn't have tattoos or piercings, but you were a sinner. God is bringing people to our church and we cannot turn them away. But how can we place God in a box and then complain that he is not doing what we need or expect him to do? We put them in a box and they're like, hey, why aren't you doing it? Well, because look, look where you put me. And God is not going to do something in us if we do not give him the room, the space, and allow him to move within our lives, our homes, and within our church. We can't be putting them in a box and then complain. God cannot work according to and limited by our standards. He can't work according to our standards and, we, and, we, and he can't be limited by our standards. But we do it. As it says, as we read in the beginning in Isaiah 55, 8, that his ways aren't our ways. His thoughts aren't our thoughts. And I love how, he, how it says that his thoughts aren't like our thoughts because his thoughts are far beyond anything we can imagine. You know, I, I remember saying this illustration or this little comment here before that in 1899, a gentleman by the name of uh, Charles H. Duell, Mr. Charles H. Duell, he was a commissioner of the U.S. Patent Office in 1899. And at the time, he mentioned these words. He uttered these words. He spoke these words. He said, Everything that can that can be invented has been 
invented has already been invented. Can you imagine? Can you imagine of everything that has already or has been invented since 1899? From 1900 to 2021, everything that has been invented. And this gentleman who was the commissioner of the U.S. Patent Office in 1899 said these words. Everything that can be invented has already been invented. You know, and sometimes we have that attitude with God because we lack faith. We lack faith, and, and our lack of faith limits God. Our, our lack of faith limits God. Because, you know, by, by not believing in, in, that, that He can do it, our attitude takes over. Our lack of faith, that attitude takes over, and we say, no, 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 God can't do that. God can't do that. No, 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 no. I, I, I think that, that, that because of our lack of faith, we say, no, you know what? That might be too much for God. What? Have you forgotten that we serve God almighty, all powerful? There is nothing impossible for him, but yet we limit God because we can't believe that much because our faith does not go that far. Because our faith is limited by this right here. This human brain that's right here. These human emotions that we have inside. When we begin to limit our faith by our mind and our emotions, our thinking and our emotions, mm -mm, everything, everything begins to go downhill from there. Because it, be, it, 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 it takes our faith and it diminishes it. It, it, it squashes it. And our faith needs to flourish. Our faith needs to grow. Our faith needs to be without limits, without bounds, because the, our God is without limits and without bounds. We have to not, we can't allow our, our lack of faith to limit God. You know, and then relying uh, on our own power instead of God's power, that also limits God. If we begin even to, to say, well, if I can't do it, if I, if, I, if I can't think of it, if I can't do it, if I can't say, well, how is God? Can it, and, well, because he's God. Because he's God. Or even if we say, well, no, 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 I, you know, I can do it. I can do it. I'm, you know, I'm going to do it. I don't need God. I don't, you know, I got And then again, what happens is that everything messes up. Because maybe at one point we placed it in God's hands and we grew impatient and we did like, like remember Sarah? Sarai on, in, in, uh, uh, on, you know, from, from this Sunday. So what did she do? She went and she took that promise away and, and she said, I need to do it my way. I need to do it my way. Abraham, go sleep with, 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 with Hagar, my, my Egyptian servant, because that's the way that I'm going to have children. God's like, that's not how... That's not how I had it. That's not, that, that, that wasn't my thought. That wasn't my way. Sarah's lack of faith and, 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 her, and trusting on, in her own ability and her own possession, which was Hagar. She said, that's how we can do it. And when we trust in that own ability, our own ability, when we trust on our own uh, uh, possessions instead of trusting in God, and in God's power, that limits him. When we look for spiritual highs and good feelings instead of a true relationship, that limits God. You know, feeling good in the Lord is one thing. Having a spiritual high is one thing. But the problem with feeling good and having a spiritual high is that you come down from that. You come down from that. Because it wasn't true, truly. And let, 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 let me stop you there. Let me, because I don't want you to, are you saying that my, you know, God didn't move in me? No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. It wasn't truly impacting in your life that it lasted. When you have just a spiritual high, 
that, oh, that song made me feel so good. That song made me feel so good. Oh, I loved how, you know, uh, everything was this past Sunday. Or, oh, how oh, I loved, you know, how it was here. Or I loved how it was there. But if it doesn't actually change, if we don't change inside, then it was a spiritual high. If nothing in, inside of us changed, if nothing inside of us um, is different because of our experience with God, because every time that we come before the Lord and God moves within us, something needs to change. Something needs to happen. You know, my dad would always say, every time you pray, something needs to happen. Siempre que ores, algo tiene que pasar. Every time you pray, something needs to happen. And it's true. Something needs to happen. Something real, something lasting needs to happen. And when we look for spiritual highs, no, 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 I, you know, I, I don't want a relationship. I don't want commitment. I don't want to commit myself to God. I just want to feel good. I just want to have that spiritual high. I want to have that, oh, I want to leave this place feeling good. That's not what it's about. It's about having a, a true relationship with God. And it all goes back to that. And when you have a true relationship with God, you begin to grow. Because you don't grow with spiritual highs. You don't grow with good feelings. You grow when there's a true relationship. And if you don't have a true relationship and you rely and you look for spiritual highs and you look for good feelings, then that also limits God. Because God, whether it's here, whether it's at your home, whether you know wherever it is that God is dealing with you, and He begins to work in you, and you're like, "Oh no, no, no! Let me, let me stop! Let me stop, Lord! It's okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm good. I'm done." But that's the thing. We're done, but God's like, "I'm not done. I'm not done in you. Not, not, not by, not close to being done in you." But we know, but we know that if God works deeper within us, things are going to change within us, and that, that's where the problem lies. We don't want to change. We like how we are. We like how we are. We like what we do. And God is saying, I need to. Commit yourself to me. Walk with me. Have a relationship with me. Because when we begin to do that, we begin to get closer to God. We begin to, to, to allow God to get closer in us and move, do more within us. Don't look for spiritual high and good feelings because that limits God. And I'll end with this. And when we expect little, what happens is that we will receive little. As I mentioned, when we say, no, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't need all that. I just need that a little bit this right here i'm looking for this little bit right here I'm, i don't i don't need everything that god has for me pastor i just need this right here don't give me the big i i'm, I'm okay with the small no god has more to give us than what we have to ask the word of god says that and if he has more to give me than what I have to ask, praise God. Bring it on, God. Bring it on, Lord. Bless me. Move in me. Change me. Break me. Mold me into what you want me to be. Pastor, you're saying that? Yes. Of course I'm saying that. Because God isn't done working in me either. None of us. None of us. If there is somebody out there that says, Oh, God is already done with me. I, I am his perfect creation. I'm already... No, he's lying. She's lying. Because God every day works within each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. We strive. The Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul says, Every day I strive to reach that goal. What goal? The goal that God has set for me. Not the goal that I have set for myself, because the goal that I have set for myself is it, it doesn't even come close to the goal that God has set for us. And when Paul says that he strives 
every day to reach that goal. He wasn't talking about the goal that he had set for himself because he knew. Knowing who he was before the Lord touched him and reached him and changed his life, impacted his life. God took him far beyond anything that he could even imagine. So if the Apostle Paul says, every day I strive, then who am I to say, oh, I've already reached it? No, of course I haven't. Because I, I, I say the same thing every day, and we should say the same thing. Every day, we strive. Every day, we strive to reach the goal that God has set for us. Don't ask and expect little because that's exactly what you're going to get. Ask big. Expect big. Expect glorious. Expect powerful. Expect majestic. And if you put your trust in God Almighty, the all-powerful God, that's exactly what you're going to get. Don't, don't let your lack of faith limit God. Don't rely on your own power instead of God's power. And don't look for spiritual highs and good feelings instead of a relationship with God. And don't expect little, because that's exactly what you're going to get. Don't limit God. Don't put him in a box. Let him do. Give him the freedom. Allow him to move the way he wants to, the way he needs to in your life and in mine. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, as always, we praise you. We worship you, my Lord God. We thank you for, for everything that you've done. We thank you, my Lord God, because we know that you are powerful. We know that you're great. And I thank you. I thank you, my Lord God. And, and, and I ask you. I, I can't ask you for everyone that is watching our congregation and everyone that is watching and listening to this video, but I ask you for myself. Forgive me if my lack of faith has limited your plans, has limited your thoughts according to me, my Lord God, of what you have for me. If, if, if my lack of faith has limited, then forgive me, my Lord God. If relying on my own ability has limited you, my Lord Jesus, then forgive me. If, if I at one point or another have looked just for spiritual high and good feelings instead of desiring a deeper relationship with you and that limited you, forgive me. And forgive me also, my Lord God, if I have expected little and then complained when that's exactly what I received, little. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me if I have ever, with my attitude, with my actions, with my words, if I have placed you in a box. Forgive me. I give you the freedom that you need to be able to move in me. I give you the freedom that you need and desire to be able to do that great, mighty work that you want to do in me, in my home, within our church. Do it. Move, Lord God. Move in a mighty way. Do what you will. Mold me, break me, shape me into who you want me to be for your honor and for your glory. I thank you, Lord God. Because I know that I strive, as the Apostle Paul said, I strive every day to reach that goal. I have not, I cannot claim that I have already reached it, but I strive every day. And as I strive, I walk with you every day. I have that relationship with you every day. And I thank you for that. And I thank you for my brothers and my sisters that are watching, listening to this video, this devotion, my Lord God, that it may be of a blessing to their life. And I thank you for everything that you've done, everything you're doing, everything you're going to do. In the mighty, miraculous, and matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Once again, thank you for the time that you've taken to be able to watch and listen to this video. I hope and pray that it was a blessing to your life. And uh, as always, uh, have a blessed and victorious rest of the week in Jesus' name. And we'll see you here once again on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. here at Templo Elim. Uh, just a, a note real quick. Uh, we will be having a special speaker on Sunday. Uh, it is a young lady, uh, a wonderful young lady. Her name is Meredi Ramos. She's here local from San Antonio. But she has already been approved by the Assemblies of God to go as a missionary 
to Honduras and uh, she is going around uh, gathering up her support and uh, we're gonna have her we're gonna have her with us here I believe she's already gone she's already been over there but now she's gonna go as a full-fledged missionary she's gone as a, as a missionary's assistant and she's been there as a missionary's assistant but now she's gonna go on her own and she's gonna be working with children and she's gonna be working with youth so look forward to seeing you here on Sunday and we look forward to having Meredith Ramos with us here on Sunday as well again have a rest of this week that it may be a blessed and victorious rest of this, this week <laughs> in Jesus name God bless you and my shame is undone.